Okay, so in this video we're going to cover how to do the firmware update on the Tyrannus X9 Lite to the June 6th, or sorry, the June 5th update. That should enable D16 mode receiver, so hopefully I'll look at my XM Plus receivers to bind to this and be able to use it. Um, uh, first off, uh, we'll have to go to the computer and download some files to a micro SD card, as there'll be the firmware files and the micro SD card, or the SD card contents file. So we'll go to the uh, FreeSky website and go ahead and download that, and then we'll come back and put the card in here, and we can do the rest of the update from the transmitter itself. Okay, so first you're going to want to get some files off of the FreeSky website and go to their download page. There'll be a link in the description. And we want to go to the transmitter we're interested in, which is the Tyrannus X9 Lite. Go ahead and click that. And then uh, it'll, you want to get two things here. You want to get the firmware and the SD card contents. So you want to first download this one here that uh, is uh, dated on June the 5th. Go ahead and download that. And under firmware, we want also, this is the only one in here, uh, one from June the 5th. Go ahead and download that. You can see here what this fixes uh, at support for the R9M light module under the ACCST protocol and also support for D16 mode for the internal ISRM module. And I think that fixes these bugs as well. Looks like um, uh, yeah, it does a, do a power management update as well for the bug on the external power management issue. So I'll, I'll actually go through all this in a second. So once you do all that, you want to go to where you've downloaded your files, and these are the two files that we've downloaded. This is uh, this is the SD card contents here, and then this uh, file here, FWX9 Lite, is the firmware. And if you extract, basically you just right click here and hit extract all, and then you'll get these folders. Uh, in the firmware folder, you're going to have these files here. So this is the firmware file for the internal module, or the or actually OpenTX, and then RF here is the, uh, the, the firmware for the internal module, the ISRM, ISRM module. You want to copy that over to your SD card as well. And then the PMU is the power management update. So there's three files that we're going to have to flash. So we'll go back out here. So all of these things we want to copy to our um, SD card, which we're going to put into the um, micro SD card slot of the X9 Lite. First, we'll copy the uh, SD card contents. So, select all, hit copy, and we'll go into our micro SD card and hit paste. Okay, so with that, once that's done, uh, we want to put those firmware files into this firmware folder here. So, let's go back. Uh, to the download section here where the firmware is. So we want uh, this file. So we'll go ahead and copy this over to the firmware folder. And we want the RF update as well. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And last, we want the power management update. Go ahead and copy that. Okay, so we should have these three files now in the firmware folder, and I'll show you how to access this from the transmitter itself. Uh, so basically, go ahead and pop the SD card out of your computer, and we'll go and finish this up on the transmitter uh, in the next step. Okay, so we're back from the computer. We'll go ahead and put our micro SD card in. Let's go ahead and turn the radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. And now we have audio files. Let's go into the radio setup here. Just want to show you the current version. So we see we're 2.3 on May the 7th. And these are the firmware version of the module. There's a 1.10, 1.11. I believe the newer version of the ISRM module we just downloaded is 1.12. So 
So we should see a change there as well as the OpenTX version. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, update the firmware first, the OpenTX. We're going to have to go ahead and power off the radio again. And we have to power this up in bootloader mode. Take the two trims here on the bottom of the sticks and push them in while powering up the radio. And you should get this menu. And it shows the bootloader as 2.3.0. I'm not sure if we need to downgrade this. I think this goes back to 2.2.3. Um, so I'm going to leave this as 2.3 for now. I'm just going to do a right firmware. You see the current firmware is 2.3. So they may need to match. So I may need to do that. But let's just uh, go ahead and do the firmware update first. So the right firmware. And then it should find that file that's in the firmware folder. Firmware X9 Lite. And go ahead and click that. And then we need to hold enter to start. And that should go ahead and uh, write the firmware to the radio. Okay, it says write is complete, so we should go ahead and see if we can exit out of here. Okay, and go to exit. And it should reboot the warning, or reboot the radio. Now we got an EEPROM warning, bad EEPROM data, press any key. Formatting EEPROM, I may have Welcome to OpenTX. Oh, that was loud. That may have something to do with the uh, bootloader being incorrect. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll cal do the uh, stick calibration here, so we'll center the sticks and enter to start. Set sticks to midpoint and enter, and then we'll move all the sticks. You don't want to push them too far, just just enough, and then we'll move the dial and then enter, and that should do it. Yep, we're down at. Throttles at negative 100. Okay, so it looks like that is nice and calibrated. So let's go ahead and look at the radio setup. And we should have a updated version. Okay, so it says, still says 2.3.0, but yeah, it's 2019, uh, June the 5th. So on the uh, FreeSky download website, for whatever reason it said it was 2.2.3, that might be an error, or maybe, maybe I misread it. Let's go, now we have to, uh, well, we should still be on the old module um, version here, still 1.10, so we need to, need to go ahead and update those. So we'll go back, and it's going to be on page 2 of 7, go to the SD card contest, go to firmware, and we need to update the ISRM module, so long press this, and this is going to be the inter flash internal module. Go ahead and press that, and that should uh, update the firmware for the internal module. Okay, so this flash successful, and we want to. This is Check the version. And now we're now 1.12, so that looks like that worked. And the last thing we want to update is the power management firmware. I'll press this. And it just says flash power management. Yeah, so hit select that. And that ought to be the last thing we update. Okay, so that ought to reset everything. Let's go ahead and power everything down. And we'll go ahead and power back up again. Welcome to OpenTX. We ought to have the, the latest firmware on here, so let's go ahead and go into our model. So now, yeah, the internal RF module now is in access mode, or you can change it to ACCST, which is the old D16 mode. So that was not available before. 
So it looks like we just have access and D16 only. I don't see anything else available. Uh, let's go ahead and let's turn it off for now. Let's see if there's any other options available for the external module. It's R9M Lite, R9ML Access, R9MLP Access, and off. So no multi-protocol module yet. That's disappointing. And no crossfire. So it looks like we'll, we'll have to wait for the uh, next video when I do the nightly build. This is just the official one. So at this point, let's exit. Go ahead and turn off the external module. And let's test out the D16 here. And it looks like... Uh, yeah, just standard bind and fail safe options here. So let's um, pull up a receiver. So I can use this URUAV battery checker. And put this into SBUS mode. This should give power to the receiver. And then we want the signal to be there. I'm going to hold down the bind button. I'll plug this in. Actually, let's unplug the battery. Let's put this in. Okay. Now I should be able to hold the bind button down. Power this up. There we go. The receiver is in bind mode. And let's go ahead and hit bind on the radio. And we'll just do channels 1 through 8 with telemetry off. There we go. Got the flashing lights. So it ought to be bound. Now I just need to power cycle the receiver. Okay, so there we go. We have a, well, let's get the camera focus. We have a flashing green light, we're bound. And should have yeah, this is uh, roll, pitch, throttle. So I think the yeah the, the radio is in TAER mode or channel mapping. So it does look like it's all working, and we have RSSI as well. Has so I didn't have to flash the receivers firmware. This is the old firmware that has the RSSI firmware for back from 2017. That is still working. So yeah, looks like this is working now. We can use our XM plus receivers with the R9 light radio. I'll have another video pretty soon with the nightly builds and perhaps Crossfire, um, maybe a multi-protocol module. So if you guys are looking for that, stay tuned. I should have that video coming pretty soon.